I don't know. I just never thought that we would be able to get Mysterio on the big screen. <laughs> Thank God you guys did it right. He was so great. And you know how hard it is to make somebody that wears a big fucking fishbowl for a helmet look cool? Kudos. Spider-Man Far From Home is the last movie in the MCU Phase 3, and it is the first movie following Avengers Endgame, and I loved it. I thought it was great in every way. Tom Holland is obviously back as Peter Parker, and just delivers this role like he did in the others that's just like this quirky teen that is just awkward but also powerful, and he's trying to have a high school romance life, but also trying to balance this hero life. And he does such a good job at it. Like, you believe he is Peter Parker, and that's the whole thing that the other movies were truly missing. You had Tobey Maguire, who was convincing as an older Peter Parker, but not as convincing as Spider-Man. Then you had Andrew Garfield, who was more of a hipster Peter Parker, and was an okay Spider-Man, I guess. Like, he still, he made comedic quips and did flips and stuff, so... I mean, I guess a monkey could have been Spider-Man. But Tom Holland has it all. He's got a mixture of the two, and I think he delivers it perfectly. He's a little balance of this awkward teen, and he's this obviously this powerful hero. And he's trying to have a life while also trying to maintain a hero life. It's believable because you have a kid who doesn't want to just always be the hero. You have a kid who also wants to have his life. In this movie... It portrays that you know he's going on vacation to Europe with his friends and his classmates and he doesn't want to bring his suit because he wants to embrace a life he just wants to have vacation he doesn't want to have to save the day all the time obviously when you're spider-man or you're any hero you're gonna have to the one thing I like more about this movie than I did about homecoming was Zendaya Zendaya at the end of homecoming was announced to be MJ that was their MJ. Now, they never said Mary Jane. They always just say MJ. And I didn't necessarily like that at the end of Homecoming. But now watching this one, it, she just has this unique kind of character. And she definitely has good chemistry with Tom Holland on set. And you really believe that these two have like this crushing romance. And I like it. That brings me to one of my negatives for the movie is... Um, maybe the first 20-30 minutes of, of the pacing of this movie was a little slow. Um, the first 20-30 minutes is definitely, most definitely, a teen high school rom-com, more or less. And that's weird because when you go into this movie, you know, you expect the Spider-Man antics, you expect him to do all his high school stuff too, but it felt more like watching like just a high school musical type thing right you just see these kids interacting in high school and just wanting to be in love and wanting to embrace each other and random relationships here and there that don't last or aren't really a relationship but they are said their relationship like you know like when you're holding hands at recess and saying your boyfriend and girlfriend that kind of thing but by the time that he gets to europe by the time that the entire class gets there and shit actually goes down and nick fury contacts him and explains to him the threat that's coming in that's when this movie starts to hold place in its own, I believe. I loved Jake Gyllenhaal in this movie. I thought he was great as Mysterio, and he had surprisingly great chemistry with Tom Holland. Like, it really felt like a like a buddy friendship. Like, they really felt like they've known each other for a while now, and he's just been acting as, like, an older brother figure to Tom Holland. And that I really liked. I liked it. Um... I will say this movie does have quite a few surprises in it. I don't want to spoil too much. If anybody's watched my reviews before, I don't like to spoil. But this movie does have quite a few surprises. Um, one that you should have anticipated if you watched the trailer and was like, eh, I don't really like that concept they're going with, but we'll see what they do. Um, I will say, if you know what I'm talking about, that does pan out the way you were hoping it would. Um, the major plot point for this movie at least. And then the next surprise comes from the post credit scene. There is two end credit scenes. There's one about midway through the credits and one at the very, very end. Um, the one midway through the credits I would say definitely stay for. It sets up what's going to happen after this movie. It sets up 
a pretty big ordeal and a pretty big thing that's going to be happening with Peter Parker's life. But anyways, back to Jake Gyllenhaal and Tom Holland. They give such a great performance together to the point where you don't even care to see the rest of them. And you love seeing these two on screen together. And even when it wasn't Tom Holland with him, when it was just Jake Gyllenhaal, you can tell Jake Gyllenhaal like, just had fun with this role. He killed it. He had a good time. And that's what I wanted. I didn't want this to be a performance for anybody where they came on and was like, yeah, this is a paycheck. I'm just going to do what I have to do and be gone. No, Jake Gyllenhaal definitely had fun with it. You can tell by his performance and the antics that he gives with it. It's just... A really, really great time for him, and you can definitely tell that. I'm obviously a nerd for movie scores. Anybody that knows me will be able to tell you that. And I loved the score in this movie. I thought the music fit well into it, the sound of it, and everything was so beautiful and mixed perfectly. And I think the music is one of the best in the MCU movies. It's so hard to do this review because there's so, there's so much that I can't talk about because it would spoil everything. The only thing that I can tell you is... If you've seen Endgame, you know about Tony Stark's death, and all of that is the theme of this movie. How does Peter Parker become this powerful figure that Tony Stark wanted him to be? How do you fill those shoes? And that's what this whole thing is pretty much about. Do I balance the life easily, or do I take the hero side because it's the right thing to do? Because it's obviously too hard to balance that life too easily. You, this movie has constant themes of trying to balance it just like in homecoming maybe just a little more so because he's with everybody in this one he, you know that he has to go down the route he has to go down the hero route of choosing to save everybody he has to save people he has to be that hero because he has the power and who else could do it if he can another thing that's good about this movie at least in my opinion was nick fury doesn't play a huge huge role in it i was afraid that with the inclusion of nick fury and maria hill that it would be this team up cop-esque you know, hero movie where Nick Fury and Peter Parker would be teaming up for a majority of it. He works more as a behind the scenes guy for Peter Parker. And I think that works a lot better. Kind of like how Tony Stark was to Peter Parker in Homecoming. It's now Nick Fury, but he's more of like the uh, angry stepfather type instead of the bestowing greatness upon my young child kind of father. But again, I thought everybody's performances worked well the only issue i really had with the movie was the first 20 30 minutes before they get to europe because i feel like the movie kind of dragged a little bit and gave you stuff you didn't really care to see but overall i think this movie killed it i thought it did great and one thing i really love about this is that spider-man has been doing such a good job with its villains i mean you have so many contenders of all these villains that they're making really well on screen and maybe not every villain that they've had on screen has been great but you get the picture mysterio does a great job in this movie the villains that they have portrayed in this movie are really 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 great and there are some great flashback sequences to characters that have been in the marvel movies that you don't even remember at all but they play a part in this movie as well and i think all of it is tied in really well and i think the exposition in this movie is even really great too it's not a bunch of explaining or having the villain explain his big evil plan and all of us just sitting there watching like yeah yeah yeah, i get it the way they do it in this movie is really good and i i loved it again it's it's hard to do this review without spoiling it but i don't do spoilers in my reviews and again i'm having a tough time here okay overall i love spider-man far from home aside from minor tweaks in it that i would have changed maybe but i'm going to give this movie an a Guys, if you've seen Spider-Man Far From Home, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you thought, anything that I missed that you wanted me to touch on. Let me know. I'd love to talk with you about it. And as always, please like and subscribe down below. I greatly appreciate everybody's support. And I'm sorry I didn't have uh, reviews out this past week. I was in St. Louis. We were filming uh, a movie for my film company. And you can follow our company here at RareCoin Media. We're on all social media platforms. Um, we have our website and everything like that. So you can keep up to date with... Uh, everything that we're filming but the movie that i had uh, just taken part of and filmed um, should be done and out by early next year um, so keep an eye out for that on our website and through here i'll definitely be promoting that too but again thank you all i love you guys um, and i will be back next week